Hello everyone. Today I am going to be doing a quick overview of how to use Hydra. Um, before I start this video, I want to put out a disclaimer that everything you learn on here is for educational purposes only. You're only going to try this on the network that you're authorized to try this on unless it is your own private network. If you use this for if you use this for any other purposes or try to cause harm to any system we or I am not responsible and that is going to be your responsibility so before we go I'm just going to say real quick what Hydra is Hydra is an online password cracking tool that can perform fast dictionary attacks against different protocols so be it SMB remote desktop SSH, HTTP, FTP, and the list goes on. For this quick tutorial, we are going to use Hydra to brute force or do a dictionary attack on my Ubuntu system. So we use a Kali Linux VM to attack an Ubuntu VM. So the first thing I'm going to do is tell my authentication logs so we can see on the left side, this is my Ubuntu VM, and on the right side, this is my Kali machine. So I have this tailed so we can see live how the attack is going on from the logs. And so the first thing you want to do is go into your Kali Linux. And if this is your first time using Hydra, you can just type the command Hydra-H. Sorry, Hydra-H. That should give you um, the dash H stands for help. It basically gives you information on how this tool can be used. It gives you the syntax. So as we can see right here, this is a full syntax of how the Hydra tool can be used. We're just gonna keep it basic. Um, I'm gonna go over some quick options. We have the dash S option that you can use to specify a port. So for example, if someone has an SSH server that you're trying to do a dictionary attack on, and they've changed from, they don't use the native port 22, they've changed it to use a random port, let's say 6,000. And then you can always use that dash S to specify that custom port. Um, another important option is the dash L, which you can use to specify a login or a login file and the dash P to specify the password or the password file. If you notice on here, the dash L, lowercase, is used when you're specifying the login. For example, you use dash L and then maybe administrator or support. If you're using a login file, you use the uppercase L. The same goes for password. If you're using a password, one password, you want to use the lowercase dash P. And if you're using multiple passwords in a file, you want to use the uppercase dash P. And um, same goes if you want to list a file with IP addresses, you we will you will use the dash m um, command to list them. Um, know that <clears throat> if you are using a file, the files have to be. You have to make the text file in a specific order. So I'll show you an example on here. I have these files that I'm going to use for this video. So if I just go here and view the context of my users.txt file, that's how your file has to be. It has to be one username per line, and it, the same with the password file, it has to be one password per line. So there's tons of dictionary word list and password files out there. If you are using the password and the um, username in one file, it's going to be the username and then the space and the password so there's tons of um, password files out there you can go to github and look for them but for this tutorial i just created my own because since this is my local network and we're just doing testing so it doesn't really matter so to do the ssh brute force or dictionary attack on this ubuntu system the commands we want to use is hydra dash l to specify the um, username file and then we'll do a dash p uppercase p 
to specify the passwords file. And then we do the service SSH and we will input the IP address. And once you do that, all you need to you can add the the, the option V for Vboss, which basically gives you more information about the attack as it's going on on the Kali Linux system. I will correct that on here and we'll let that run. Sometimes it may it may take a little bit time for it to start. Uh, my Kali VM is running just on one gigabyte and so it's not really that fast. Okay. So as we can see here on the left side, um, my um, log folder, I'm tailing my authentication logs and uh, we can see the failed login attempts that are going on on my Ubuntu system. The first password, username and password file that I have, it's not going to find the correct password because um, for this dictionary attack to be, to be successful, the username and password have to actually match a username and password on the system. So at some point, if I let this run all the way to the end, it's going to fail. But I'm going to stop it and I will use my second file that I have on here um, that is users1 and password1.txt and we should find the username and the password because it's I have a correct username and password included in that file so we should be able to be successful this time. And we should get we should get uh, a notification that said password found. Yep, there we go. It's right there. So as we can see, when we use the second file with the correct username and password, we can see on here that the um, host with the IP address that we're trying to attack with port twenty two SSH, we did find. Um, a correct username or login root and the password of that. So now that we're done, this applies to other protocols as well. If you are going to do this with um, remote desktop, all you need to do is you're also going to change the protocol on there. The syntax is always the same. The only thing you need to change most of the time are the, pass are the usernames or the passwords and username files the protocol and IP addresses and options that you need to use. So take some time and do some practice by yourself. If you have any questions, you can post it below on the comment section and please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.